e fui traduzir a mim mesmo depois. Né? Qual foi a minha surpresa? Falei, ah, meia horinha eu sento e faço isso. Né? Mas foi quase tão difícil, não mais, do que traduzir um texto de uma outra pessoa. É, eu tô, o, o, o Ian não está por aqui, mas depois talvez ele que gosta de tradução. Está o Ian? Não. É, talvez ele me explique o que acontece, que eu mesmo fiquei tão estranho a mim mesmo quando fui me traduzir num texto em inglês, não sabia o que eu queria dizer. Eu mesmo tendo escrito aquilo, né? Bom, uh, ok, so let's turn to English. Uh, I'll try to... Uh, let's wait for the Portuguese version. So, uh, uh, I'll try to stick to the text uh, so that I can, we can synchronize English and Portuguese here, which for me is going to be a first and a struggle, but I'll try. We're always learning. Uh, that's it? Okay, it's different from what I have here, but to say so. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, the, the title of my talk is uh, Virtuality and Critical Praxis in an Online Interpretive Community. Uh, and uh, the discussion I present herein is an effort to envision the potential for critical performativity uh, through the use of digital spaces in the context of my own pedagogical practice that is, uh, the teaching of literatures of, in, in English to undergraduate students at uh, Federal University of Sergipe. Uh, here, uh, I will focus on uh, data gathered from my first experience with uh, uh, incorporating online activities uh, alongside uh, regular classes, and, and that experience took place uh, between April and June uh, 2010 uh, through the formation of a community of practice uh, a community that in, uh, aimed at uh, collaboratively interpreting short post-colonial texts and uh, functioning as an alternative space for enhancing uh, the work that was being done concurrently in our classroom meetings during that same time. Uh, our uh, interpretive community operated on two virtual spaces, uh, a web page and a blog. Uh, the web page hosted information uh, general information about the course, uh, text for reading, uh, the videos that we used in our discussions, uh, 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 and, and uh, we had the blog in which the, the discussion itself took place. Uh, b uh, the reason for having those two different spaces uh, is because I wasn't able to, to uh, find, uh, to, to put everything together, that, that was my own digital literacy that was lacking in, in finding that, in being able to find that place. So, uh, what you have here, uh, can, yeah, next, okay. Uh, you have there some uh, uh, images of the, those spaces, uh, the site and the blog. That's what they look like today. Um, because I, I'm, uh, uh, coincidentally, I'm right now teaching the same course and I'm uh, repeating the experience. Uh, and uh, so that is the, the, the the first uh, image is uh, an image of the site. Uh, you can't see much there, and, but you have the, the home page that you have uh, at the top. And here is uh, the, the page for one of the sessions. So we had five sessions, five interpretive sessions during the, the, that semester. And this is the, uh, this is the, uh, home, the, the page for one session today. Uh, just because I see the image of uh, Rafif Ziada now, there, uh, I think uh, I should say something about uh, uh, Canada, Brazil, because this is the the, uh, the focus of the, the event. Uh, so uh, through this uh, uh, these activities, not only that, but in this uh, post-colonial course that I teach, uh, I've been uh, uh, slowly uh, uh, bringing Canadian uh, uh, texts and Canadian the Canadian imaginary to to our work, and it's something. Uh, that's all, all, uh, also a process to myself. Uh, so uh, I have worked in class with uh, Thompson Highway. Uh, this this term, we uh, be, uh, we are we interpreted already uh, Rafif Ziada's poem uh, on on uh, the Palis Palestinian question. Uh, we are going to work with uh, Dion Brand in in a session in a few weeks. So slowly, Canadian literature and 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 themes and imaginary creeping in uh, our our work here, right? But anyway, uh, this is just to give you an idea of what the, the, 
spaces look like. And uh, on the right, uh, you have an image of the blog, which is a, a separate space for the discussions. Uh, so you would have then uh, information, general information about the course and the videos and uh, the, the, the blog uh, on another space. Okay, so uh, let's move on, yeah. Uh, I'm going to repeat myself, but I prefer to read so I, I don't get lost here. Uh, we conducted five interpretive sessions in 2010, uh, each of them lasting three weeks and anchored on different kinds of response videos, uh, each video with uh, approximately 10 minutes or up to 10 minutes. Uh, and these videos were produced by students and strategically pl placed uh, along the session so as to spur the discussion. So we had three kinds of videos. Uh, the first responses, what I called first responses, at the beginning of the session uh, that were meant to start the debate. And then uh, uh, at the middle of the session, a second video uh, that I called intertextual response. And, and that video uh, uh, required uh, bringing in another text and uh, 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 preferably a, a multimodal text uh, that, that uh, uh, the student found had some relation with the text we were discussing. And a third video uh, at the final part of the session uh, that I called reassessment, which was meant to, to look back at the whole session, the whole discussion, and, and draw some uh, conclusions, generalizations, and uh, comments about the, the, the process itself. Right? So each session was organized as follows. Uh, yeah, you had then, uh, well, I think I'm going to skip that, but you have just uh, uh, an idea of the schedule for, for each session, right, with those videos. Uh, three week uh, uh, session. So, uh, the sessions were meant to create uh, new possibilities of interaction and to stimulate the development of critical agency in the act of meaning making. Uh, they would therefore place the literary text at the center of the process, uh, which, which has not usually been the case uh, here in our tradition, and I would say both uh, 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 high schools, secondary schools, and, and uh, universities. Uh, I think that we, uh, and, and this is, a, even before I got to the new literacies group, uh, this was something that I already felt that uh, uh, we had become in our literature courses, uh, 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 specialists in theory, in history, but literature itself, the literary text, had somehow uh, slowly uh, disappeared from our uh, uh, daily practice, practices in class. Right? So the objective is uh, uh, that, besides uh, 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 making collaborative work, the currency, not only for negotiating meaning, but also uh, for Oh, sorry, got lost. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'll, I'll find myself back here. Okay. Uh, so, uh, making collaborative work, the currency not only for negotiating meaning, but also for articulating individual and group identities and powers. Uh, as it normally characterizes virtual spaces, uh, these were designed to deal with knowledge around the text in a fluid, participatory, distributed, spontaneous, and random fashion, uh, whereas a more traditional and formal work uh, with theory, context, analysis uh, would be undertaken in our regular classes. Uh, however, uh, it was expected that both spaces would communicate and, and contaminate one another somehow, uh, classroom and, and the online spaces. So uh, this is just a, a, present, a presentation of what uh, we did then in, in digital spaces that semester. Uh, but uh, I'm going to interrupt now this, uh, uh, and, and I'll talk a little bit about some theory that might uh, uh, eliminate what I had in mind and how I think that would fit into the uh, uh, new literacies uh, uh, ideary. And uh, uh, then I'll go back to showing you uh, some more uh, of what happened exactly in, in those sessions, right? So, uh, before moving on to present some of what happened in those sessions, I will, uh, I will consider a few theoretical aspects of that practice, uh, beginning by grounding it uh, on the volatile field of critical 
meaning new literacies, multi literacies, critical literacies, that field as one thing, uh, and and uh, uh, try to. to uh, I, ha I also I think should say that uh, uh, this is part of a process in which I was myself trying to 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 find my own way within the, uh, these theories. Uh, this, uh, so the pro I, um, this is part of my doctorate uh, thesis. And uh, the process of coming into contact with those theories and developing practices uh, for my teaching those theory theories is a, 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 a parallel process. So I was being educated and, and trying to learn and read and, and, and uh, uh, deal with that as, at the same time as I was trying to work with that uh, uh, so it was my research interest and it was also my uh, everyday practice interest at the same time. So, uh, the developing from the tradition of critical pedagogy, uh, critical literacies see knowledge production uh, as political practice in broad terms, that is, as a site for the enactment of ideologies and power relations. And that entails a commitment to understanding and questioning social practices and the social construction of identities. Uh, thus, enmeshed in the historicity of experience, uh, critical literacy approaches absorb and critique discursive formations and transformations and are particularly interested in the hybrid and multimodal textualities of our technological age as well as in the new epistemologies, performances, and possibilities of agency uh, which may emerge in digital spaces. In this sense, the effort to create an online community is a response uh, to uh, one of the educational demands of our time, uh, an attempt to critically engage my own pedagogical practice uh, with the new discourses that have been uh, uh, made available by current information and communication technologies. Uh, the theoretical implications of such positioning are manifold, uh, and I don't have the time here to get into them uh, comprehensively, but uh, I'd like to concentrate on the need to articulate uh, conceptions of literature and conceptions of interpretation, which would uh, foster critical engagement in our digital spaces. So I come here to the objective of this uh, talk, right? Uh, how, uh, as I was doing that, I was trying to find uh, uh, um, modalities and, cons and, and uh, 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 concepts of literature and of interpretation that would fit the work in, in digital spaces, right? Uh, so uh, I will here uh, uh, talk a little bit about that articulation. Uh, 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 using the notion of virtuality and, uh, as, as the center for uh, uh, this attempted cohesi cohesiveness to, to that community, right? I think, yeah, we are there. So I have already referred to the relation between virtuality and digital networks and, and, and critical practices. Uh, uh, from the perspective of, of critical literacies, uh, but I, I think we should emphasize that uh, criticality and, and virtual spaces uh, uh, walk hand in hand in, in critical literacy. So the way virtual spaces constitute opportunities to explore uh, the spirit of collaboration and participation, uh, the construction of collective intelligence and shared knowledge, uh, the heterogeneity and horizontality of relations, uh, space-time fluidity and complexity, uh, epistemologies of performance and design, uh, in short, the dynamic and potentially democratic configurations that such spaces offer to critical pedagogy. Uh, I think I should emphasize here potentially democratic configurations because uh, uh, sometimes we, 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 we get caught in the idea that uh, uh, ICTs uh, are in themselves uh, democratic and uh, uh, we have many examples that's, that, that prove to us that that's not the case, but they could be or could be used in uh, uh, a citizenship education, uh, democratic education, uh, and they have the potential for uh, being explored for that. So, uh, the question uh, uh, then uh, seems to be uh, which conceptions and modes of literature and of interpretation can uh, best enhance the critical possibilities of cyberspace? 
Uh, I will begin uh, trying to. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, I will begin addressing that question, uh, then uh, uh, using uh, Levy's and, and, and Ryan's uh, uh, concept of virtuality, uh, because I think that, that that notion of virtuality, as, as it is understood by those authors, uh, can help us uh, create that, that connection, right? Uh, so, um, both authors conceptualize the virtual in opposition to the possible. Uh, contrar contrarily to common users that sometimes uh, present the terms as synonyms, right? So for them, virtual is the opposite of possible. Um, they state that the possible is static since it projects a fixed image of the present into the future. Therefore, transforming what will be into a mere reproduction of what already is. Uh, I'm, let me keep reading the text. I'm here dying to say other things and to go, but let me keep reading the text. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Resist. Uh, so, uh, meaning that what has already been imagined, uh, predicted then, uh, is the possible. And that is why it is a fixed image a projection of the, the present into the future, right? So, thus possible actions are but imitations of the present. On the other hand, the virtual is a, what they say, uh, what they call a problematic complex, a, a node of pulses and tendencies that are constitutive of a situation or event. The virtual is a process that calls for some kind of resolution, and it only takes shape when it becomes the actual. It does not necessarily pre-exist. It is not necessarily predefined. It may include the possible, but it may exceed the possible. Uh, it does not exclude the impossible in that sense. Uh, virtuality then is a non-essentialist concept, uh, one that portrays history as such, uh, not as a reproduction of the past or uh, idealiza uh, idealization of the future. Uh, complexity and unpredictability are traits of the virtual which characterize the networks that constitute digital communities. The virtual is an event, not a still image. And I think we don't need many examples to, uh, we have it from our everyday experience with uh, 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 networks, uh, uh, online networks, social networks, that uh, 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 vividness of, of those spaces. And I think that the idea of virtuality of this unpredictable, uh, uh, something that is resolved now and uh, uh, here, uh, something that uh, has a, 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 a large element of unpredictability uh, uh, is, is uh, uh, easily understood from our own uh, experiences. So, my argument is that, the, that such notion of virtuality may be taken into consideration in the process of selecting texts for online interpretive communities. Since texts which foster unpredictability, complexity, instability, or undecidability should produce more dynamic and instigating events of meaning making, more densely historicized processes of collaborative interpretation. And I don't think that is too far away from the idea of querying literature querying, right? Uh, producing this estrangement in, in the experience. So, uh, I will explore a little bit more the theoretical aspect of it. Uh, talking about Bakhtin's notion of literary discourse. Uh, because it, I think it can shed some light on, on, on this issue. So, Bakhtin states that the literariness of a text results from the constitutive otherness that is established between the author and his, her hypothet hypothetical readers. Um, literature then becomes an attempt to bridge the gap between self and other, recognized as such, so that it becomes a space for negotiating difference, an effort to communicate and play the game of meaning making in face of the unexpected and the unknown. 
Uh, I'll stop here just a minute to make some comments because uh, s some may, may argue that, well, but that is the, the nature of any act of communication, uh, creating a bridge between two. But uh, what Bakhtin is uh, uh, saying is that the literary text, and the literary text is not uh, a matter of being or not being, what he's saying is that the literary text is a matter of uh, degree, so uh, property that you could find in different degrees in different texts, literariness. Uh, but what he's saying is that, is that uh, differently from uh, everyday discourse in which we uh, tend to assume uh, uh, an element of sameness uh, uh, with our interlocutors. Uh, so let me give you an example. If I say, uh, if I'm here with Diana and I say, uh, um, this, is, uh, this is great work, and I show her a, a, an image of a painting. Uh, when I say this is great work to her, uh, I mean, I, I assume that there is a lot of sameness in our experiences, in our understanding of the world. Uh, so uh, uh, I, I'm not uh, 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 starting from a, a stance of uh, otherness. Uh, Diana, we share many things and I know that and we have these in common. We, we belong to the same group and culture and Western experiences. So uh, uh, many things are unsaid then or are not revealed uh, when I say to her, this is great work because of this assumption of uh, uh, a common experience. So Bakhtin defines the literary as based on that, that literary discourse does, uh, assumes between author and potential reader, assumes otherness. Uh, and this, that element of otherness is, is, is that uh, forces the literary text to present uh, language, the world, uh, ideas, experiences, in a different way, because we are not, uh, 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 we're not uh, uh, starting from this uh, presumption of agreement. We're starting from this uh, uh, presumption of uh, not knowing, of being distanced, of being others, and needing to uh, come together into this experience that has to reproduce in itself then that strangement, that otherness, that has become an element of otherness throughout which a certain resolution and a certain uh, 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 attempt at or negotiation for agreement will be done in the act of reading. Right? I'll return now, if I find myself here. Uh, okay, uh, so in this sense, understanding meaning as what is possible in a text can only go so far as writing goes. For being an act of communication, it only comes full circle in the actual reading in the historicity of a given reader within a certain time and place, it only makes sense as virtuality. Talking about literary reading, right? As an event, as a process, uh, as an act of engagement. Moreover, as uh, a genre, uh, literature is founded on such difference uh, and each text nurtures it. The constitutive awareness of otherness and the decision to accept the experience of otherness make it what it is. Uh, one must bear in mind that these properties are, are, are not meant uh, 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 as a definition of literature, uh, but simply uh, uh, I'm taking uh, uh, this notion of literature as, uh, uh, as criterion uh, uh, or uh, part of the criteria that I use to, to, to judge the text as uh, adequate or as uh, uh, productive in the process of uh, 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 interpreting texts in, in digital spaces. So I'm not saying that this is literature. We all know that concepts and, uh, uh, and literature is criticism. Well, so many concepts are, are so hard to define. But anyway, uh, I think that this notion of literature and looking for literary texts that present such qualities uh, uh, um, uh, is uh, probably something that uh, the teacher should, should take into ac to account when working in digital spaces collaboratively for interpreting texts, right? Uh, I think I'm going to skip some, some paragraphs here. Um, no, let, let's go on. I think I'm going to read because it's going to be... Okay. Uh, so, uh, the strangeness and instability of the literary experience may arise from different sources, uh, linguistic, ideological, cultural. In the case of the interpretive sessions that I, 
I'm talking about, uh, the choice of post-colonial texts uh, became a, 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 an important element and an important source of that uh, uh, virtual quality, right? Uh, literary texts that we used were both uh, 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 not only literary texts for the sessions, yes, but in class we were using also uh, uh, post-colonial theories, right? So they played an important role in creating the conditions for critique because not infrequently they challenged the reader with the possibility of an alternative pers perspective, a different way of seeing and knowing that emerges from the cultural logic of complex and uncertain hybrid territories. Such spaces of dislocation force the reader into analogous experiences of dislocation inviting them to question and reconfigure their own experiences and positions. Uh, as experiences of, of otherness, post-colonial texts may well serve the purpose of producing meaning collaboratively as an event of virtuality. So, uh, one thing then that we, we, uh, uh, we have covered is the idea then that uh, there is virtuality or there may be virtuality in literary texts, right? Uh, so we are using digital spaces and the, quality, and the virtual qualities of the digital spaces, spaces for critical practice. We are looking for literary texts that present those elements of virtuality in their own right. Uh, and now the third and last aspect of virtuality that I would like to bring to this practice is the idea of virtuality in interpretation. Right? So, one last instance of virtuality that I would like to discuss is the concept of interpretation, which was in place throughout our sessions. Uh, traditionally, literary reading analysis or literary criticism materialized as the presentation of results, findings, uh, presentation of polished meanings and truths, uh, explanation of the meaning of the text. Uh, so, if we are to recover the dynamics, the plurality, and the instability of meaning-making uh, for pedagogical purposes, uh, we must then shift the focus to the interpretive event uh, rather than the after-the-fact fixing of meanings, right? Uh, so, to deal with literature from that perspective, or uh, if you want to recover the virtuality of interpretation, the dynamic, the uh, unpredictability, uncertainty, complexity of the process of meaning making. Uh, you have to find pedagogically, way, pedagogically ways of dealing with the literary text that are not just after the fact presenting results, informing what the text means, what someone understood, what uh, 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 the interpretation is. And uh, so you have to transform the work of the literary text uh, 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 into an event. So, uh, Fish, uh, Stanley Fish, defends a method that takes into, a, into consideration the temporal flow of the reading experience and slows down the interpretive process so that the driving question becomes what the text does to the reader instead of what the text means to them. Uh, and, and this is the opening, uh, 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 opening up or, or, or swelling of the, the process of interpretation that can create an expanded field and reveal the fissures through which uh, uh, critical activity may, may creep in, may, may occur, right? Uh, so I, I believe that the configuration of our online sessions, uh, digital, collaborative, uh, had the, or, or produced the opportunity to do just that, to extend, to make uh, uh, the process of meaning making temporarily extended. Uh, it was, so one text was not read, one short poem sometimes, not so short, but anyway, a poem was not read in, in, in five minutes, it was read in three weeks. It was not read from one voice or perspective, it was read from 23 students' voices and perspectives. Uh, in the perspectives of other texts, in the perspectives that, ro that, that uh, 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 rose from the perspectives that were introduced by the others. So the plurality and multiplicity of the experience. But uh, here I'm calling your attention to the, to the exploration of the digital space and the technology 
as an opportunity to create that temporality, that complexity, that uh, 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 um, new form of uh, 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 dealing with uh, uh, producing meaning. Okay, my computer just died. Uh, I need to find where I have a backup here. But for this backup, I'm going to need my my working eyes, which are this one. Uh, Anyway, so, um, bear with me. Okay, uh, so, uh, yeah, creio que. I believe that the configuration of an online interpretive community such as ours provides just the necessary tools to establish such temporality, dynamics, and expansion. The thought movement produced collectively during a session seems chaotic at times. Negotiations of meaning, fixing and escaping, flux and reflux, directions and redirections, building up and crumbling down, moments of silence and prolixity. Uh, all in all, it resembles a tentative and uncertain movement which incites the participants' agency and their work towards some sort of agreement and understanding. However precar precarious that uh, 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 understanding may be, and understanding through difference and complexity, uh, and we have to uh, highlight that uh, poetic texts uh, usually work very well in 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 that sense, working with poetry. Okay, uh, it may be. Uh, I don't want to get too theoretical. I think we're going to go straight to the sessions then. So the idea was not uh, uh, here really, uh, I'm not going to present data analysis, uh, but I wanted to talk about these principles uh, of, of our, uh, how uh, the way the, the, the community was designed and the uh, philosophy of education, the pedagogical principles that uh, 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 were uh, inspiring the practice itself. We are talking about Valkyrie's tree once more, right? Uh, so let's go to the uh, top of the tree and take a look at the leaves. Uh, what actually happened there, right? But uh, I, I wanted to make clear that what was happening there was inspired by this idea of virtuality in the digital space, in the literary text, and in the concept of interpretation that we were using. So uh, let's go straight to the. Uh, uh, so. Yeah, um, let me just talk about that image a little bit uh, because uh, we, the one thing that I didn't mention that I'm going to skip here because of time is uh, this idea that the process then of meaning making in these conditions and from that perspective uh, uh, and the idea of interpretation is not an idea of uh, simply moving outward and uh, understanding the other, be it the world, uh, 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 the text itself, uh, my interlocutor, but the idea that that process of interpretation, that process of meaning making, is a process of identity construction, right? Uh, that, that we make sense to ourselves in the process of making sense to anything that we can make sense to, right? And uh, Vanessa Andreotti in her, on her Facebook, without knowing it, uh, produce this image for you. Uh, não vemos as coisas como são, vemos as coisas como somos. Yeah? And, but it's the indissociability of uh, giving meaning to other and self. These things are uh, indelibly enmeshed, right? So, uh, let's take a look at what, uh, at what uh, happened in those sessions. Um, let's move on. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to explain a little bit the, the text that we were uh, interpreting in that session so that you can read some of the comments posted by the students and, and, and know what they're talking about. So uh, in, in that session, we uh, worked with a short story called The Rain, Rain Came by Grace Ogat, a Kenyan author. And uh, uh, very briefly, uh, the story talks about uh, Oganda, uh, 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 a young woman uh, who is, uh, uh, who learns in the beginning of the story that she, she is going to die uh, and she's going to be sacrificed 
by her community, by her uh, uh, tribe, because it hasn't rained in a long time. And uh, the ancestors, the oracle, has told the chief that uh, the rain will return if Uganda is sacrificed. So she has to, to uh, walk uh, one day, night and day, uh, by herself, voluntarily, to this lake and uh, jump and give, her, give herself to the monster, uh, uh, to the lake monster, uh, in sacrifice, and that will bring rain back to the community. So uh, I'm not uh, uh, going to read, but I have there uh, the end of the story. But to make the story short, uh, I will just say that what happens in the end. She goes to the lake. Uh, she's very tired uh, uh, when she's uh, almost getting there and she's rushing because the sun is going to set and she has to, to, to uh, end the sacrifice ritual before the sun sets. And uh, uh, she feels that something or someone is following her, but she's very tired, exhausted, she can't move, she's almost uh, 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 senseless. And uh, she tries to, to, to run, she can't, and she, she uh, uh, faints. Uh, when she wakes up, uh, Osinda, a character that had hardly uh, uh, appeared in the story before, is uh, uh, holding her in, in his arms. And Osinda is the one she wanted to marry. Uh, and uh, he has come to her rescue. What happens is that he uh, uh, rescues her. Uh, they run away, they cannot return, of course. Uh, uh, to the tribe, they run away, uh, and uh, when they are leaving the sacred land, the land where the sacrifice is supposed to, to take place, when they are leaving, uh, the rain comes, and it begins to rain uh, 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 cats and dogs and other animals. Cats and dogs are uh, tamed, probably giraffes and lions. There, something that went. Anyway, uh, but just this is the story that we were interpreting uh, in that session. Uh, so let's read some of what the some of what the the the, the comments were. Uh, what do you have here? Let's just move on. Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, next. Next page. Yeah. Uh, just, uh, can go there. Uh, yes. Uh, the the posts from examples of postagens. Let's go there. Uh, no, you can't read, so I'll have to read to you. Uh, this comes from the videos that the students posted or uh, the blog discussion, right? For example, one student says, uh, one thing that's very interesting uh, when she says, their minds were too preoccupied with their own survival, and which means that the people I mean, they wish she, Uganda, gave herself to the monster and as, uh, and as fast as she could so that she, or so that they would be safe. They were only thinking about themselves. They were like encouraging her to give herself in the end. And in the end, the rain, the rain came. Yeah? So you have this uh, concern with uh, how, how come people would, because they cheered, they felt, uh, uh, they even envied her because she had been given that, uh, that uh, mission, right? And, and she's, uh, the student here is appalled at, at this. So, another student. Uh, Labongo, the, Labongo is uh, Oga, uh, her father. Labongo believes in his ancestor's prophecy that, uh, and that his only daughter, Aganda, must be given in sacrifice to the lake monster in order to deliver everybody from their distress. Even being the consecrated chief of his people, Labongo is a man who has feelings and doubts like any other. He doesn't want to disobey the ancestors, but he loves his daughter. Uh, he doesn't want to see her dead. Maybe if he lived in a society like ours, with our hab habits and creed, he would have put his own interests above everything. He would have allowed his only daughter, Uganda, he wouldn't have allowed his only daughter, Uganda, to be sacrificed. Right? Um, I'll skip some. Again. Uh, here, there is something that is not clear for me, uh, which is the end of the story. I don't know if there is a specific, um, a specific meaning, because the rain came, so I believe that the people were safe after this. But the sacrifice of Uganda didn't happen. So the, this meaning that is not a, I don't know if the author wanted to show, 
to give a specific explanation or I don't know if it was something like um, that she didn't she didn't believe that kind of straight tradition should be followed I don't know for sure so I'd like to see your comments on that uh, I'm trying to interpret as an actor also this is a video performance uh, video post um, well there are others just one last one uh, a student says the power of everything is inside our mind at the moment that they believed the rain would come because she would be sacrificed this belief could make it happen so talking about individual interests doesn't mean that you are going to damage anyone else everything depends on what you really want to happen and that was what she did anyway these are just okay these are just a few uh, 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 comments uh, and I'm going to end then by uh, just saying that uh, what well, two things that I think uh, summarize uh, what happened in those sessions first or uh, the, the idea that meaning was produced uh, in a shared distributed collaborative manner uh, that uh, uh, it, it the process of knowledge creation became non-consensual uh, uh, it was complex it, it was uh, participatory it was an event uh, as we have been dealing with this was one important thing the other important thing is the suspicion that I have that uh, identities certainties uh, essentialisms may have been questioned, may, be, may, be, may have been stirred, mainly through the way the debate slowly moved from being about them, being about the text or African culture, Kenyan culture, uh, Luo culture, it moved from being about there into being about us, into being about our culture, the question of individualism, Christianity, uh, our society, etc etc uh, there were of course problems and I'm only showing the sunny side of the experience but I'll use the time as an excuse not to talk about the negative aspects of this and leave you only with the good side of it okay thank you very much